In June of 2007, in the midst of the worst IPO market in history, Data Domain went public against staggering odds. The market has been in love with the stock ever since. Data Domain is one of those rare companies that hits the market at the right time with the right solution and then catches fire, spawning endless copycats and wannabes, as well as attracting undesirable attention from the 800-pound gorillas who like to call this industry their own. I recently spent time with Data Domain Chief Executive Frank Slootman and had a candid discussion on his perspective of the landscape, the opportunities, and the threats that the company now faces. Frank, talk to us about the problems that created the opportunities for Data Domain to first exist and then to thrive. What is this new market, right? The one thing, the one constant that we have in our industry is that data is growing. It doesn't matter whether we show up, not show up, data is moving every single day. It is bigger than it was yesterday, the week before, the month before, and so on. It has been breaking the infrastructure that we've been building over the last decade, even longer. It is fundamentally broken. We are not capable of getting our data off of our primary systems. We are not capable of moving the data off site to be protected of site level failures, whether it's floods, or hurricanes, you know, whatever, terrorist attacks. This process has been fundamentally broken. It is very, very acute. The redesign of these core processes is a number one priority for CIOs in the enterprise all over the world. There had to be a different way to solve the backup problem. You know, every day we use an existing technology to copy the data off of our primary systems and move them offsite. With the growth of the data, that legacy infrastructure has been breaking to the point where we can no longer get our jobs done inside the business cycle. We only have 24 hours, then the next 24 hours start. Um, these processes are fundamentally broken. It's not that we're not that good at it. We are completely bust. So the, the acuteness, uh, the, uh, the urgency that this problem has taken on really created the opportunity for us to come in with a new way of solving that problem. And that's really uh, what, what you see in front of you today. You know, one of the fastest growing data center technology companies uh, in memory. Fundamentally, the problem that we solve is a data volume problem, and it relates directly to data growth. We have a certain amount of time and a certain amount of data every single day that we have to move. Size matters in storage. It's not what you can store, it's what you can move, because you only have a certain amount of time to get that job done. So the speed of transfer, you know, both off of system and off of site, is critical. The only way we're going to solve the data volume problem is if we can cut it down to size. The problem with backup is, is that Monday through Friday, we are basically creating a copy of the same data every night. Come Friday, I have five times as much data as what I started with on Monday. Yet the data change rate may be only be 1% or 2% a day. So come Friday, I have 5 to 10% data change, 500% volume change. That's just week one, and then week two starts and week three. So you get a bit of a view of how massive this problem is. And if you add to that the fundamental data growth that is inherent in everybody's business, you have an enormous problem on your hands. We often get asked, uh, certainly you know, during our, our whole IPO cycle, investors wanted to know, why can't other people do this? You know, um, we have so many large technology companies, they certainly have the where for all to do what you do. So why you? Why, why, why do you have this unique you know, moment in time opportunity to be this en enduring entity on the landscape? And it's a fair question because these companies have tremendous resources. They've been around for, uh, for a long period of time. Now history will show you that a lot of companies have emerged when long-term secular trends were set in play because they were new entrants. They came in with a clean sheet of paper. They had no encumbrances. They had a first mover advantage and it has proven to be very, very difficult for general purpose players to go after design purpose-built uh, implementations that went after a specific problem. Uh, I, I also believe that the separation in time is incredibly important. Um, in, in our particular situation, it took a long time for the incumbents in the industry to really get a good grasp of what is going on here. Um, we really fought the established economics of the industry. I mean, in storage, I mean, we live off of capacity. Heck, we love capacity. You know, data is growing, you need more storage. Uh, that's a good thing. So here we come uh, really reducing the need for capacity. We're fundamentally an optimization technology. The industry doesn't take kindly to that. Customers do. 
So they resisted it, and they were hoping that this was going to go away. There was a bit of den denial going on for a good period of time until this thing really blew wide open, and everybody and his mother decided, oh, my God, um, you know, we better get a move on. So you've seen people partner. You've seen people make acquisitions. Every single large technology company on the planet right now has a story, has a play. Some of them have had multiple plays. They've had to revisit their entry into space over and over again because they haven't been successful in, in getting traction with it. Um, you know, we really like the fact that, uh, that companies like NetApp and Cisco also were regarded as features in the early days and dismissed as being startups and they weren't going to be around. Well, guess what? They're still here, right? And kicking butt all over the place. So, you know, my favorite saying is, you know, babies become soldiers. You know, they grow up and they start fighting back. So uh, that separation in time is really important because time is all we've got. That's when we, you know, get strong. That's when we mature and that's when we evolve. And before you know it, you've got a very large company to contend with uh, in your space. Are there lessons to be learned by looking at other historical or current successes and failures? The, the Cisco example is actually an interesting one. You know, prior to Cisco, networks were owned by the system companies, right? The big system companies had networks. They worked fine, and there really was no need for a new vendor, except there was one problem. None of these vendors' networks interoperated, and none of them wanted to, right? So here came Cisco. Right? They made it all work together, and it was a need that the users had. The vendors didn't have it, but the customer did. And the customer, of course, you know, drove Cisco to the heights that, it, that it's now at. So the system companies fundamentally you know, were not willing uh, to go against their own grain and open up their networks and create a generic open-to-everybody type system because it, it, it fundamentally cannibalized the core business that they were in. Closed systems was the, uh, was the way people did things back then. So Cisco changed the landscape forever. Um, we are trying to do the same thing to storage. We're trying to make optimization the core of storage rather than capacity, which is what the industry has fed on since time immemorial. So the same exact thing is, is happening right now. You know, the incumbents um, are not going after the opportunity the way we are because they have existing franchises. We sometimes refer to them as profit sanctuaries to protect. Very, very difficult to chase data domain because if you really do what data domain does, you will really you know, bite into the existing storage franchises that are holding up the business. H history repeats itself, right? Um, when Cisco was the startup, they challenged the status quo and they are who they are right now. Lo and behold, Cisco is now being challenged by startups. They don't have the first mover advantage and they have the exact same problem that the system companies had in their day. We see the same thing in our business. Uh, EMC challenged IBM very, very successfully for the high-end storage business, but now they are the incumbent and have difficult time to reacting to first movers in their space. NetApp is similar to, to, to Cisco, but also a little bit different, you know, different, different point in time and a different set of problems. The storage vendors uh, at that time were very much catering to system vendors, whether they were on the mainframe or on the mini computer. Uh, as a result, you know, storage was direct attached and was really controlled by that particular computer. You know, what NetApp saw is that the workstation market started to proliferate very, very quickly. Of course, all those people were having uh, direct attached storage to their workstations as well, couldn't share data, and had really trouble provisioning the storage so that, you know, we didn't have 10% utilization on, workstation, on one workstation, 90% utilization on another. So they went after a market that was evolving and developing very, very quickly that was not being served by anybody, right? And they didn't want to go and, and serve that marketplace because it was not in their economic interest to go, you know, deal with these new upstarts, which were these workstation users. And they had an advantage again in time. It took people a long time to catch on and say, whoops, this is the way the world is going. And by the time people woke up and realized uh, which way the wind was blowing, and that it was very far ahead and had a very entrenched uh, position. They've never looked back. Everybody and his mother has tried to compete with NetApp. NAS was a feature. Remember that? It wasn't that long ago since we heard that refrain. Uh, and, of course, you know, they are still uh, leading with, uh, with the best, cleanest implementation of that concept because they were pure play, they were purpose-built, and not an add-on, tag-on uh, to an existing legacy technology. Well, we, we are not unique. I'll, I'll take an even uh, more recent, more prominent example of VMware. You know, where did they come from? Um, out of nowhere. Uh, even, they probably backed into an opportunity they could not fully foresee at the time uh, they started their business. 
but how come the big system vendors, and this really is a system technologies, didn't foresee uh, and didn't understand that this thing was going to become completely ubiquitous to the, uh, to the deployment environment? That's the question people really should ask. Why them and not the incumbents? We've grown very fast. I mean, on a historical basis, we've grown even faster than, than NetApp did during its first five years of shipping. And we've grown up sort of during two major economic uh, recessions as, as opposed to during the heyday of the bubble where people were buying stories like it was uh, going out of style. So it is, it is satisfying for us, uh, but you know, far, uh, we're, we're not very interested in, in resting on our laurels here and feeling good about ourselves. Uh, any emerging company in this industry is severely challenged uh, by the incumbents. Our industry is a bit like a cartel, you know, there is a handful of very large companies that provision the vast majority of, of data center infrastructure and it doesn't happen very often that new large entities come to the forefront. If you go back to the storage example, um, the last time we saw new significant entities emerge is when we have significant secular trends, long-term trends, really create those entities, and those were actually net up, we already talked about them, and brocade, because the big fundamental shift, the last big one that happened in storage was during the decade of the 90s when we moved away from direct to network attached. And long-term secular trends give rise to new entities. That much we do know from observing what has happened in our industry. Today, it seems everyone is adding deduplication technologies to their product portfolios, including very well-established, very well-entrenched incumbents. In the face of that, how does data domain prevail? The clean sheet of paper approach is really important in technology developments. There comes a time where continuing to develop an existing technology, you start to contort it, you start to break it, you start to encumber it. That creates the opportunity for the startup to say, look, we're going to take a clean sheet of paper and we're going to purpose design and purpose build this technology to solve this particular problem. And it will not be encumbered and limited by uh, legacy implementations and requirements that are not core to the mission that that new technology wants to fulfill. That's when you want to watch out. As a, in, in other words, uh, we always see, uh, see legacy products evolving, adding on, adding on, adding on. Eventually, they just crumble and crush under their own weight. And that's when the opportunity comes for the new technology. And it's very simple. New technologies are typically single purpose and special purpose because they're only trying to solve one problem and they solve it ridiculously well. The history clearly proves that bolting on technology to existing implementations doesn't work. If that technology worked, there wouldn't be a whole lot of innovation. There wouldn't be any new companies. Uh, it's just de facto that strategy doesn't work very well. But that is what we do. You know, we very rarely see incumbents really go back to the drawing board, throw away what they have, and start over again. They just can't do it. It's, it goes against their grain. It is just not in their DNA. Uh, companies that, that come into new markets need to be very thoughtful and very careful about what opportunities they attack and which ones they don't because they're not all created equal. Uh, we're not going to go after markets and opportunities where the incumbent is strongest. Right? We need to go for places that either aren't served because the problems aren't recognized, aren't understood, or we got, we're going to places where things are very, very broken and they're being ignored for whatever reason. Uh, so we're going to go after markets where the effect of our core technology is most pronounced and most pervasive because that's what we'll be, we will be playing to our strength as opposed to somebody else's.